functions. Now we've used functions quite a lot and we haven't really deep dive into what they are. Essentially functions are blocks of code that we give it a certain operation to do. Functions are used whenever we want to modularize our code or maybe make a code snippet or a certain operation reusable. Users can call functions and functions can call other functions. Contracts can call functions on other contracts all depending on its visibility. Here is a pseudo example of a function's full definition and all the goodies that it can have. Now a function starts off with the function keyword. It then can take some parameters in brackets. We need to specify some visibility level and then we need to define if it's going to be pure view or payable. And then we also get a return type. Some of these are all optional and I'll discuss them in a few videos. Also note that this is pseudocode, so in between here there's also a function name. But let me show you an example of basically the first part and how small we can make a function and use some parameters. Let's take a look at an example. To create a function, we start by writing the function keyword and then give it a name. I'm gonna call this my func, my brackets, and my curly brackets. Good practice for function names is that it needs to be camel case. Now, if we look, we see we have an error and it says that you mean or intend to add public. You know, it needs this visibility specified. So what we'll do now is I'm just gonna write public, but I'm not gonna discuss this yet. This we'll discuss when we get to this section. For now, this is how basic we can make a function. The keyword, the name, brackets with no parameters, and then the open and close curly brackets. Now, although this function won't do anything, it has a function signature. The signature consists of the function name and anything that is within these brackets. What this means is that if we have a duplicate function with the exact same signature, it will not work. You'll see there's an error, and it means that we have an exact same signature of a function because the program won't know which one to call. There's an easy solution to this, and for that, we're just going to simply say this is my other function, and that will work. But let's say we want to look at function overloading. What this means is that if we have the exact same function name, but we have two different signatures. For example, we are now going to pass a parameter in the second my func, And what we'll pass, it will be a uint. And I'm just simply going to refer to this as number. Now my number is being passed into my func, the second function, and you see the error is gone. This is known as function overloading. It means that we have the same function name, but two different function signatures. Let's go ahead and deploy this contract. Now when we have deployed it, we can see we have my func, which cannot take in any parameters, and we have my func, which takes in a UN256, a number. Now this is great and we can maybe pass the number 5 and call my func and we can see it executes and my func over there. It doesn't do anything. But how does the EVM know which code base or which code snippet to even run? Well, this is why the data field in a transaction is there. If we expand our last transaction, we can see here on the input, the data that we have sent looks something like this. Now, this might look very strange, but this is exactly how the EVM knows what function exactly to run, because it's based on a signature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it above my func2. And for the previous transaction, I'm going to copy this input, and I'm going to simply paste it above here as well. Now, as we can see, this one is way longer than this one over here. And that is because the first function doesn't have any parameters. The second one has the number parameter. And you can see after all the zero padding, at the very end, it says five. And this is the parameter that we passed into our function. But still, what is this? These four bytes over here. If you exclude the zero X and you look at these eight characters, these are the four bytes that define this function signature and the exact same for this function. How do we get that? 
Well, all we'll need to do is hash the function signature and take the first four bytes. Let me show you in a variable. So let's give us some more space and then here at the top, I'm going to write bytes and then I'm gonna give it a name. This will be func1 and maybe we wanna get the hash of the func1. And how do we get this actual hash? Well, firstly, we need the bytes value of our signature. So we're gonna do this and paste it in here. And then we need to wrap this and hash it. To hash these bytes, we can make use of something special that Solidity provides, and that is the KECAC 256 hashing algorithm. Now the KECAC actually gives us back a byte 32, so we need to store this as a byte 32. And I'm also going to make this public so we can read it. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same for our func2. Now func2 takes in this uint. Now we're not gonna specify the name of this parameter, just the uint like this. Let's save this and close and delete our previous deployment, deploy the new one. And now I wanna read what function one is gonna be. And here we can see the full hash. Now, if we take the first four bytes, you can see that it's exactly the same as this over here. Now, what will happen if we check our func2? We can see that the bytes are here, but the first four bytes are not the same as this. Why is that? Well, this is because when we do specify our function signature, we need to write out the full type. So uint256, this uint is actually an alias for it. And I wanna show you this because most people make this mistake and then they end up not calling the functions and forgot that this was actually the alias. So now when we go ahead, save that, close it, deploy, we can see that our func1 is still exactly the same and func2 now matches exactly over here and over here. Now, these are the first four bytes, like we said, this is what the program will get, and then a bunch of padding with a parameter. I know this might be a bit tough to understand, but just realize this is how it works behind the scenes and how the EVM knows what function to call. Let's now take a look at the parameters in the brackets. Now I've changed my function to say myFunc1 and myFunc2. These are not the same signatures at all, even the names. But as we can see, a function doesn't have to take any parameters, or it can take parameters. And a function can take multiple parameters. These are the names of the parameters and you can call them whatever you like. I'm gonna call it my number, or my num for short. And then we can specify maybe another uint, an integer, or maybe I wanna add a boolean, and I'll say my bool, like so. You can add a wide list of parameters that you can use. And why is this important? Well, these parameters get passed into the function and then we can make use of them in this block. For example, we can say maybe if my bool, which is a boolean, we know it's only gonna be true or false, is equal to true, then do something. The possibilities of what we wanna do is endless, but I just wanna also illustrate something. Let's say that my bool is true, then how about we call my function one? So we can say call my func one, like so. Now my func one is not gonna do anything, but let's say my func one also took in a uint, and I'm gonna call it my num. You can call it anything you like, something more descriptive. For us, this is fine, and we can see there's an error, and it says that my func takes in an argument and zero was given, it means we need to pass in a number. Now we can either pass five, but how about we pass our parameter that's passed to func2. So instead, we say pass my num. And this will be this my num, not the top one over here. And this has to do with block scope. Now I'll talk about scope later. For now, just understand that functions can have more than one parameter as well as call other functions. 